uh, recording the screen too. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me all right? Let me check my audio just to make sure. I mean, it's working. You guys should be hearing me. So, um, maybe I'm just, oh, hands raised. Oh, I, I guess that means like somebody can hear me, maybe. So, I, I, created, a, I created a poll for those who are uh, joining today. Um, it's basically just like a questionnaire. Let me go and find it. Polls. So, I'm going to launch this poll. Launch this poll already before I start the webinar. Let me see how this works. Can you guys see the poll? Try to answer the, the question on the poll. Let me guys know. Okay, so I see how the poll works. Um, I think I did, I think I did the poll wrong. <laughs> now I know how it works by seeing how you guys are, uh, responding to them. Um, basically, uh, everything is, everything is there. Pretty much everything is, uh, what price action is. Um, all five questions. I didn't know that once I put the poll, when I when I type the poll up in the questions, what it's going to do is it's just like a questions one through five basically or um, or whatever. I, I thought that you guys are going to be able to answer these questions after, but I guess not. But um, anyway, so just with this quick poll that I did wrong, of course, I mean I'm pretty bad at trial and error stuff, but anyways, um, price action is um, price action is pretty much determined up to the viewer. There's very many ways of being able to see price action. Um, everybody sees price action in a different way. Some people, some people might like trading retracements better. Some people might like trading confluence better. So everything is determined up to the the person who is trading. But price action is the only profitable. Um, price action is the only profitable way to become consistent consistent in the forex markets. Um, I don't know a single trader that doesn't trade price action that is not consistent. Or I don't know traders. I mean, I, and I personally know traders who don't apply price action, and they're terrible. So if you're just following like a specific strategy, like let's say somebody uh, posts a strategy, or like uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start this broadcast too. We got some. We got some more people that are um, joining in here. Um, if you're not trading based off price action, um, you're basically you, you've got a really bad start into the forex game because price action is really uh, my interpretation of price action. Like this is all pertaining to my interpretation and over the years of trading and from my mentors and all the research that I've done. It's it's being able to see a a, a naked chart and understand where price is going. Because that's what price action is. It's understanding where the higher time frames are going. So like I said before, a lot of different people will trade their own interpretation and their own way based off of price action, which is totally fine. It's 100% okay. So some people that like to trade with EMAs, maybe their strategy that they trade is based off of like a cross and then a retest, blah, blah, blah. But if it's not based around price action and understanding where the higher time frames are going, then um, you really have you, you're really pretty much going to be lost in the forex markets. And that's a fact. That that's a that's not speculative. That's a hundred percent fact. Is you have to understand what price action is, hundred percent. So I'm going to see if I can uh, what I can do with the poll. Maybe hide it or something. Um, I'm going to go ahead now. Let me see. Let me see how I, uh, I'm just going to close this poll for now. And um, now I understand how it works a little bit better. So I made a little mistake on the poll, but now it's just all trial and error for me. So um, anyways, moving forward, can you, let me know, let me see, I saw some, um, 
I saw questions. What's going on, Kyle? What's up, Damien? Um, go ahead, send me a message, guys. Just put a question in the question box. I want to make sure you guys can see my screen right now. Can somebody just say they can see my screen? Anybody? I want to make sure that my screen... Yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. So if one can see my screen, I'm pretty sure everyone can see my screen. All right, perfect. So um, I'm just going to really hop right into it as I... As I um, as I'm usually explaining, right, Dave, uh, what's up, Dave, what's going on, everybody? All right, so we've got, um, who traded, who traded today? <laughs> who traded today? Who wants to understand a little bit more of higher time frame? I can see it. Gary can see Hugo. Okay, perfect. Everybody can see my screen. Perfect. All right, as more, uh -huh. more attendees are, it seems like more attendees are coming in. So this is... This is what I want you guys to understand. This is what I want you guys to really be focusing on um, moving forward. Number one, of course, as I like to explain in my webinars, is trading plan. Whoa, it's trying to look for a stock. Right? Of course, trading plan, guys. We got to stick to our trading plans. We got to understand. Um, we got to understand where price is going based off price action, and we got to understand how many entries we're going to place. We got to understand. Uh, we got to understand where our profit target is, right? Our profit targets are zones, right? Our entries are determined up to you, right? Like my interpretation of the market is, I like I like to enter off of pullbacks. I like to enter off of lower highs and higher lows, right? So if we're looking at the four-hour time frame, for example, those who follow my Instagram, of course, um, could saw the, these signals, right? So let's just go straight for what happened like a couple days ago, right? So we, of course, we have this higher high, okay? And then by the morning time, what did price do? Price broke through and made a lower low, right? So now we have a lower low. Why is this a lower low? Because we want to see where the recent support was. Our recent support was here, right? This was our recent support. So if I draw this up and I look left, we'll be able to see that it was a nice support area. We can look left. You can see see how we have uh, price here. You can see where price touched here on the 19th of December. And what does it do? It touches it on the 5th of January. So price always comes back to where it's already been. That's how we have structure, right? So we say here was our most recent support zone, and early in the morning, we had price broke through our, our support, right? So now where did it go? It went to our next support zone. This is kind of a large zone, so I'll shrink it up a bit. But you can see, um, you look left and see, okay, price has been here a ton of times, right? For pretty much a whole trading day, price was just consolidating. Right, so we're able to draw up these zones and say oh, this is a solid zone. Where's the next one? We look left, we say, Well, here's another solid zone, and then of course, based off of based off of even higher of time frames, we drop our more zones. Right, these are just the destinations that price is going. So, let's talk about today, or let's finish off from yesterday. And then, what did price do? Price makes lower high, right. Price makes a lower high, retouches this zone here. This is like a minor zone. The hour time frame would have a nice minor zone here. Um, based off of higher time frame momentum, right? And then right for the Asian open, we had a nice pull up. And then this is right, this um, four hour candle is during Asian session open. This is during the Asian session open, right? So now we have a lower high. So if this is a lower high, and in prices in confluence, and we're still going down, we're still bearish. What does that mean? It means we have to break this support, and so where is it going? So it's going to go to the next support, and if it goes through there, it's going to the next support. This is how you gauge your profit targets, right? And as you see, it, it dropped down, I think, 60 pips. Yeah, 60, almost 60 pips. Now, let's move to today. So all day yesterday, price dropped right after the Asian Open. This is why we trade around the four hour time frames, the hour time frames, and we just wait. If we have no confirmation in the morning, we wait till the next four hour. If we have no confirmation then, you can wait till the next four hour, right? And a lot of people have jobs as well, so 
um, being able to plan around your job is is extremely easy in the forex market. Because I'm a firm believer in you can never miss an opportunity trading. You can never miss an opportunity trading. If you're not up early in the morning, chances are by the next hour you have confirmation. If you don't have confirmation then, you probably have confirmation by the next hour. If you don't have anything then, you just keep waiting. It's just being patient. Don't rush in trades. Don't try to get in there to make a couple bucks. Just wait for the big moves. Wait for confirm, right? So what did price end up doing? We broke through. Wow. We come all the way down here. What do we got? Another lower low. So this becomes a lower low, of course, because we already broke the support. And this is, becomes the lowest point that price has been. So what did the next four hours do? In the next four hour time frame, follow momentum. What did it do? It just kept going down to the next zone. Ends up rejecting, yada, yada, uh, right in time for this. This whole push here was all the way through London open. This was all the way through London. London came all the way back up to make another lower high. Just to drop from 2 a.m. all the way until 6 a.m. And then what did price leave us off with this morning? Price left us off with a wick to fill. And price, this is the things that I look for. I look for zones broken. And you can see, look at the support, look at the support zone. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see here's our support zone. Price already broke through. And we had a wick to fill. We have a wick to fill. So my mindset is okay, I'm already sell bias. Right, we're already sell bias. We're 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 going down. We go to this the currency meter. The currency meter was like this all morning. USD and Jappy was both strong. So when I'm looking at these charts and I'm noticing that okay, we're bearish, but USD and the Japanese yen are both um, pretty strong. I'm not looking for like immediate action sells. If the US dollar was extremely weak on red and the Japanese yen was extremely high as it is now, then I'm looking for immediate sells. But because these two are pretty much neck and neck and they're even, we're going to drop down to our lower time frames. And via our lower time frames, we'll see what price is doing. So if we're trading with EMAs, I trade with these EMAs, 14 and 50, um, if I'm looking for other confirmations. And what do we see? We know... My my trick, I'm teaching you guys my million dollar trick here, okay? My trick for when I'm trading in the morning is going to be around this. I'm looking for higher time frame momentum, obviously. I'm just going to put the obviously in there because it's obvious. And then what I'm looking for is... I'm looking for um, looking at... That's going to be 6 a.m. for me. And then, of course, it's going to go to 10 a.m. If I do not have confirmation by 6 a.m., by 7 a.m., I will have confirmation. Usually, 100%, we will have confirmation. And the way that I'm trading based off Confluence, guys, my profits are coming fast. They're coming within 15 to 30 minutes every single time. It's always within those 15-minute candles that profits are coming. Every single time. Same day, same time, same stuff. So let's see what price did. We look at our currency strength meter. Okay, US dollar and Japanese yen are neck and neck. What does that mean? It means that we're probably going to have a little bit of consolidation, right? We're going to go to US dollar now. We're going to drop down to our 15-minute time frame. And what do we have? We have perfect 2-2 confirm for bullish structure, for bullish momentum, even though we're still sell bias. We're still sell bias because of the higher time frame, so you can expect a pullback. You can see how far we've been dropping. We're in a downtrend. We're not going up. We're in a downtrend. So we hold our bias. However, when we're scalping still, this becomes a this here is a 2 1 confirm off the 15 minute time frame, and it still went up like 12 to 15 pips, I believe. Yep, see, look at that, right? So, this is how this becomes 2 1 confirm, right? So, this is my trick, guys. By 7 a.m., I'm gonna have pretty much 100% confirmation of where price is really going, right? So, this is this is where the trick comes in. So, of course, I we know 
The new four hour candle just opened. So we know price is probably going to have a push. Why? Because New York session just opened at 5 a.m. The trick to New York open is this. Wait one hour after the open. However you do that, we just wait. The reason why we wait one hour after the open is because the four hour candle is in the last hour of that candle which means we're waiting for we're waiting for confirmation we're waiting for more confirmation we're waiting for the candle to close that way we can have more confirmation i'm going to show you what that looks like so that's not to say that you cannot still trade in the morning because sometimes like my alarm goes off at 5 30 sometimes at 5 30 i have more confirmation that we're like going down or we're going up, etc. And I'll get in at 5.30 for like a little pre-push and I'll still catch pips and I'll be done for the day. However, this is how it looks like. If we're looking at our four hour time frame, we're looking at our four hour time frame and we're saying we're gonna wait for our four hour candle to close. Who's to say this candle wouldn't have closed in a different positioning? What if in this candle, like let's say for example, there was news and let's say the news, it came down and then it pushed it up here. Well, we might say that either that's a lower high or we're going to continue going higher bullish before we go bearish, right? So this is why we wait for candles to close. Always wait for candles to close, whether it's the 15-minute time frame, the hour time frame, the four-hour time frame. Your trading plans need to be scheduled around waiting for candles to close. I'm just going to put that up here again. Wait four candles to close because you have you have to have patience guys waiting for candles to close is what gives us patience now what had happened we broke structure we already broke our structure first thing in the morning okay we've already broken the structure and we've left a wick to fill we go down to our smaller time frame we're already sell bias okay we're already sell bias, which means that we know that we're going down based off higher time frame. But what did the lower time frame do? There's still major scalping opportunities in between, guys. So now we have a lower low. These are my signature 2-1 confirm trades. We have a lower low, okay? Now, this right here is still a lower high because we're going down, okay? This is still lower high. It closed lower than this. But... If I'm looking for a 2-1 confirm, I'm looking for a price. You see how we have a rejection of this zone? This was, an, this was you can see like off the 15-minute time frame, just draw up the zone across the screen. You can see we have a nice zone, right? So now this is going to be, this is going to be for now it's lower high slash higher high. The reason why I say slash higher high is because what I'm looking for is price to make um, to show me what it's going to do. So this is why you wait for candles to close. So you can see, see how it's so weak? You see how this is so weak? If this price closed way down here, for example, this this candle would have closed super far down here if this currency meter, the US dollar was really weak and the Japanese yen was extremely high. If this Japanese yen was extremely high and the US dollar was really weak, then this pullback this small pullback for 5.30 right in time for 6 a.m. would have just been indefinite tank. It would have indefinitely just dropped because all the selling power was right there. But the U.S. dollar and the Japanese yen were both competing with each other for strength, right? So this becomes our overall lower high. But if I'm looking for 2-1 confirm, this also is a higher high. And the reason why is because I'm waiting for this to not break. If this structure would have closed really strong down here, I would not have been looking that as a higher low. I would have been looking that as more confirmations to sell now. But this, the way this looks is we have lower low, higher high, higher low for 2-1 bullish. Doesn't have to be forever. 
But if you're looking to scalp, if we're looking to scalp for um, like part of your trading plans, like part of my trading plan, if um, if I'm going to catch a move like this, then I'm going to potentially be done for the day. If I, even if I know I'm going, um, even if I know I'm going bearish structure, but I catch like a 2-1 confirm going like this, this would be my move for the day and I'd be done. Or I'd wait for more confirm and I'd get right back in, which as you can see, I'm going to show you how that looked. So this was right for, you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says 6 a.m. So that's, that's the beginning of the four hour candle, okay? It's the beginning of the four hour candle. What did price do? For one hour, you can see guys, right? We have 15 minutes, 15 minutes, that's 30 minutes, right? So now we have 45. This is all the way, this is now an hour right for 7 a.m. As you can see, look at what 7 a.m. does, right? 7 a.m. had its drop. It ended up coming back to the 50 EMA. You don't need to use EMAs. You don't need to use EMAs. Instead, you can just have minor and um, minor zones drawn up. So if we have a minor zone drawn up. It comes up, touches the zone. Anyways, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for here, guys, we already know our lower time frame is confirmed bearish structure, right? So I want somebody to tell me in the message board, what is this? I want somebody to tell me what this is right here. Does anybody know what this is? What this wick is right here. I want to know if somebody can tell me what this wick is. Anybody have an idea? I don't want to just give you guys this answer. I want you guys to be able to tell me what this is. Yep, okay, we got it. Liquidity wick, exactly. This becomes our liquidity wick, guys. We're already sell bias, okay? We're already sell bias for the morning. We already know price is going down. We already know price is going down. It's just a, it's a liquidity wick. This is what it is, liquidity grab, liquidity wick, whichever way you want to look at it. We have... Our lower time frame, the 15 minute time frame, we had 2 1. We had a 2 1 confirm, right? We had a 2 1 confirm only, only for liquidity. This ends up being liquidity. So, what do we have? By 7 a.m., let's look at what the one hour candle looks like. Let's look at what the one hour candle looks like. So, we have the same process higher high. Lower low, lower high, it becomes a new lower high to continue momentum. But if you're not comfortable entering just based off of support and resistance levels or entering off of the one hour time frame, of course we drop down to our 15 minute time frame. What do we have on off our 15 minute time frame? Boom, right by 7 a.m. Within 15 minutes, within 15 minutes, we have confirmed we're going down. If we are looking at the five minute time frame, the five minute time frame made a 2 1 confirm for bearish, um, for it starting to go. This is a hard confirm to spot. This is something that took me a while to be able to uh, train my eyes to see, guys. But if we're looking here and we're already sell biased via high time frame, we also have a I don't recommend doing this. This is just my this is my technique. This is this is just me, guys. This is just me, right? We have higher high, lower low, lower high. You can see how price did not break this resistance level. And then right by seven o'clock exactly within in that five minutes, now we have confirm. We have confirm. You see how just strong this um, this uh, rejection is here? It just has a nice strong rejection. We're going down. We're, this is now our this is now our confirm that we're going down. If you ended up wanting to wait for more confirm, you absolutely could. You absolutely could because you can see by here by 7:30 we end up having a broken structure and then a new lower low and a new lower high just to continue going in bearish momentum. So there's no excuse to not have opportunity to get in and get out for today's trade, right? But if we're looking at the 15 minute time frame, for example. Here's based off our 15 minute time frame. In this 15 minutes, you can see where did price break. Price broke 
our recent support zone. This is our most recent support based off of the 15 minute time frame. Of course, this becomes our next. So what did price do? Price pulls down, breaks it. It breaks it just by a little bit, but it still breaks it, right? A little bit of liquidity pulling up. It's nothing. Maybe two pips and continuation of trend. This is how many pips it ends up dropping in 45 minutes. In one hour, it ends up dropping 40 pips, right? This is the power of our higher time frame. This is the power of, yeah, every, every, I'm, I'm reviewing the questions. Everybody's right. It's all liquidity, Wick. Everybody's right. It's all liquidity. So when, when we're looking at these higher time frames and we stick to a bias, guys, don't get scared if price is pulling up a little bit, right? Expect that. Leave room for that. But check your currency meters, right? So if our currency meter was really weak for the U.S. dollar and really strong for the Japanese yen, I would have taken an uh, immediate sales. I would have taken immediate sales right off of the four-hour time frame here. I would have just taken immediate sales right here. The reason why I would have done that is because the currency meter was really telling me, you know what, all the selling power is right now. But U.S. dollar and Japanese yen were neck and neck. So this is when you just wait. My personal strategy when I'm trading is, is with the pairs that I like to trade is I'm literally looking for the weakest pair. So if USD Jappy, like US dollar is really strong, Japanese yen is really weak, I'm literally looking to just trade UJ on bulls just because the Japanese yen probably is pretty weak. It has no buying power, right? So USD Jappy would be going bullish. This is my cheat sheet. I'm using this as a cheat sheet to help me with entries to help me with understanding how strong or how weak the currency is at that moment. So you can see that because the US dollar and the Japanese yen are neck and neck, that's why we experienced off of price having a little bit of consolidation, making a 2-1 confirm ends up just coming up to be, ends up being a liquidity wick for 7 a.m. You can see by 7 a.m., just as a little overview, it already drops, right? And I want you guys, I, I don't know how comfortable you guys are with following momentum, but when you see stuff like this, when you see stuff like this, like price confirming, okay, because the higher time frame is telling us we're going bearish, it's not bad to even enter right after the end of this wick. Or if you're trading the five minute time frame, the five minute time frame you can see was just creating boom, boom, boom. It's just going down, right? Ends up making a lower high finally here by 7.30. And then, of course, you can have plenty of scalping opportunities. Look, it drops 20 pips, right? That's that's in that's in less than an hour. Price comes and you're done. Like, you're literally done. You're done trading for the day. We're moving on to the next day. We're waiting for our next confirmation. I'm lost. I don't understand at all. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to um, get I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask you guys um, another question here and I want to see kind of an understanding I'm gonna make a new for the next webinar I'm gonna have a new poll that is gonna be organized better now that I know how the poll works just in case people do have questions I can be able to answer more respectedly during the um, during the webinar but um, so Dave is saying that he's not understanding what um, what liquidity means. So Dave, what a liquidity wick means is what price is going to do. Let's look at the four-hour time frame, right? Let's look at the four-hour time frame. This is what liquidity wick means. Okay, we have we have bearish momentum and structure. We've already shown that we're going down via um, higher time frames for this moment. Okay, we already know that we're going down. Price ends up pulling up super heavy, right? You see how price is pulling up here? Price was pulling up here and you could have saw it, which we've been reviewing based off of our 15 minute time frame. What prices end up doing is it's put, price is getting pushed up, just getting ready for all the sells, right? So a lot of people are thinking like, okay, well we might be going up. So people are adding in a lot of buys, a lot of buys, a lot of buys. Price is going up, price is going up, and then ends up being a liquidity wick to where it becomes the major institutions making pushes, making pushes. 
So this whole thing is basically just to gather more money to be able to push down. It's just a gather of more money. We have no control over these. We cannot, unless you're, tr you're trading trillions of dollars, you have no control over which way the market is moving. You're only moving with the market. Okay, but a liquidity wick is basically price gathering up more monies, getting ready in, in, in those pushes. It's just liquidity. It's gathering more money. That's all that they are. Okay, let's let's put the, well, that's getting a little confusing now. We've been reviewing a lot of stuff. I want to see if you guys um, are really uh, catching on and paying attention so far. I want to make sure I'm not losing anybody. Um, again, I go over a lot of the very same things that I go over in all my webinars. And the reason why I do that is because the repetition is what's going to be instilled into your guys' minds. And I want your guys' minds to be able to act like a magnet and just to be able to say, I know where price is going. Boom. Your eyes are magnetized and you already know um, based off of experience, based off of training your eyes. This does not happen overnight. It took me a very long time to understand how the market moves. Once I understood what lower highs were, higher highs, higher lows, etc., and I was able to apply them off of the higher time frame, it basically created an unstoppable monster with scalping. So that's my hope in my future for you guys. That's my hope in my future. So can somebody send me a question just letting me know that you guys are paying attention, that you guys are following along, and that you guys are understanding? I want to make sure that you guys are understanding. And then I'm just going to keep continuing um, going based off of um, higher time frame momentum. I want to see if you guys are understanding where our zones are, if you guys are understanding how we get our profit targets, etc. And I'm going to do another um, trading plan example for you guys here. So I'm going to go down to our 15 minute time frame. And I'm going to show you an example of a trading plan, guys. Another example of a trading plan. So we've got... Trading plan example. Okay. I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with like I've been sticking with on my webinars is four entries. Four entries at 10 pips profit, two pips, stop loss in profit, wherever you guys want that to be, right? This is how our trading plan is gonna look. So if, if we have, if we have if we're either looking for the way what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my two one confirms, I'm looking for uh, destinations where price is going to go. I'm looking for okay, all the questions are starting to come in. Loving it, bro. Thanks. Got it. All makes sense. Perfect. Perfect. Understand. Um, let me see, Hugo. I uh, think yes. It just takes time to get comfortable with it, Hugo. That's all it's going to do. It's just going to take time to get comfortable with it, right? So we've got this is this is I want you guys to understand a um, more about trading plan right so I'm looking for two one confirms I'm looking for higher time frame momentum etc so on this two one confirm for example on this two one confirm right here I'm gonna give a pip count and an example of what it looks like to follow a trading plan okay so if my trading plan is saying I'm looking for two one confirm right off 15 minute time frame understanding where higher time frame momentum is going etc this is the way it's going to look. So I'm going to put four entries here, right? Let's go. Let's go. So we've got, let's say, right in this area, I'm waiting for a higher low to be created, right? I'm waiting for a higher low to be created, and boom. Now I've got my four entries stacked in this area, okay? Where's my stop loss going to be? My stop loss is going to be in the area of the recent 15-minute support and resistance levels, Right, so in this case, this is where my stop loss area is going to be, either beyond the wick or in this wick. So you've got to understand for risk to reward. If my stop loss is here, this is my this is my stop loss is around maybe six pips, seven pips, and this is where your reward comes in. Right, this is where your reward comes in. You can you have to understand risk to reward. So if I'm putting in four entries, if I got four entries in at, um, and then we're looking at, ten, we're looking to close at 10 pips each, okay? We're closing at 10 pips profit each. That means that four of our entries 
get closed out here or two of our two of our entries get closed out here and we take home 20 pips automatically we're good to go right let's do a pip count let's do a pip count with or with um, I want you to understand the power of lot sizes right a lot of us are experienced traders or we're learning right so lot sizes right we have micro we have mini and we have standard right so if we're trading if we're trading off of standard lot I'm gonna put some sta high standard lot sizes in there for you guys to get a better idea right because I like trading off of higher lot sizes so if we're trading off of um, let's go with 10.0 standards okay uh, 10.0 standard is going to be $100 per pip, right? If we and if we're if our trading plan is saying that we're closing two of our entries, we're closing two entries at 10 at 10 pips each, right? That's two grand, right? Because if we're going to get 10 pips at $100 each, that's already 100. That's already a thousand bucks. That's a thousand bucks for um, two of our entries, okay? So right here, we enter in. This is talking about basing it off of our uh, off of higher um, account sizes, right? If we're trading off 10.0 standards, we get ten dollars per pip. This is what our trading plans are looking like, right? This is like what my trading plan is looking like. If I'm looking for two one confirms, I've got my stop loss, I've got my take profit. Okay, always have your risk to reward, right? So we've got two entries already take ten pips each. That's twenty pips. That's two grand profit done. Now we adjust our stop loss. So now we say we have stop loss and profits always, right? So we've got stop loss and our profits at five pips now. Let's say it moves up like it did. It went up to 15 pips or so. So then let's say you move your stop loss to 10 pips. So then you've got two other entries that are going to close down at 10 pips profit. Or you just end up closing all of them at 15 pips, whatever. But I want you guys to understand that once you get higher into your lot sizes, once you get higher and better at understanding your own trading plans and what you guys are looking for in the markets, this is making money in Forex is literally the easiest thing in the world. It's the largest market in the world and you get to comfortably take away whatever you want from the market. That's the craziest thing. When we're sticking to our higher time frame momentum, when we're sticking to understanding how the higher time frame works and we stick to a trading plan, without a trading plan, you're never going to get to 10.0 standard lots. But, with, but once you have an effective trading plan that works for you, you're going to become unstoppable. That's your goal. Your goal is to develop a trading plan that is going to work around you, that's going to work around your schedule, that's going to work around your eye. Because see, my eye is, I'm, I'm looking, I trade off 2-1 confirms all day long. These are what I'm looking for. But what about here? Price didn't even make a 2-1 confirm, right? There is no time for a pullback. So you got to understand that even for myself, if there's no, this is my confirm. This is beyond a 2-1 confirm because price already pulled down so major. We've already confirmed that we're going down and the higher time frame already confirmed. So I'm not looking for a pullback at this time. I'm looking for just straight entries. And if we're looking at 10 pips profit, this is your 10 pips profit. And then you just write your stop loss in profit. It becomes very simple, guys becomes very simple once you understand where our higher time frames are moving. Um, I want to see is what's another pair that you guys are trading. I want to do an analysis on with you guys. I want you to ask me some questions and I want to be able to help you guys out. So post in, in the questions board a any question you have to start and another pair. I want to go over another pair for you guys. So let me know what you guys want to what you guys want to look at. I'll look at any pair. All right, EJ, EG, excuse me, Euro GBP. I've never traded this pair. All right, let's see what Euro GBP does. Okay, so one thing, one thing to notice, Oliver, when we're trading um, like pairs like Euro GBP, for example, is Euro GBP is going to have its most movement around London session. Of course, because this is right when the London market opens, and we have Euro and GBP, which means that we have two we have two currencies that are operating in the same um, under the same um, session, right? So Euro GBP 
will move more during London session, of course, right? So as you can see, I can all I have to do without even looking at the times, all I got to do is look left and I can notice big moves like this. You see these big moves? This is right at London area time. This is right around London time. And like I always teach my students and like I trade, every single, um, every single pair is, or every single uh, push is going to have a pre-push. What that looks like is like, for example, you can see at the bottom of the screen, it says 2245. So it's about to be 2300. That's 11 o'clock. That's 11 p.m. my time. There's always a pre-push before a push. So you can get in and get out for a pre-push all day long. And as you can see, the pre-push on Euro GBP last night was gnarly. And it had a 16 pip pre-push ends up pulling down. And you can see we end up making, we have a lower low here. Right by the time this 15 minute candle pulled up strong like this, this is already telling me that we're probably going up. Another rule of thumb for you guys this is another little cheat. London Open is, is always usually bullish, it's a trick, it's usually always bullish. Most all London Opens are usually bullish, so just follow that higher time frame momentum and get an idea of where the pair is moving. Right. So, of course, like I trade always um, if I'm going to trade London Open specifically, I'm always looking for London Open's pre push. And here's the pre push. Right. So it ends up making a lower low. As soon as price confirmed here, this is right for 11 uh, p.m. You can see I'm already looking for buy entries once you can see that we're on a support zone. Um, if we're only looking at the 15 minute time frame, I haven't even looked at the higher time frame. But you can see how price ends up pushing up super strong like this. You can see, you can see, guys, if we just follow the momentum, right? You can, look how strong this is, and then what does it do? It continues, right? Look how strong this is, rejection, and it just continues, right? Look how strong this is, and it just continues. When price really reveals, look how strong this is right here. We broke the support. Price confirmed. Price confirmed after it broke support, and it finished off pretty strong. And you can just follow the momentum, right? So I'm really looking to always follow momentum when I'm trading. So if I'm looking to trade a pre-push and I already know that 11 p.m. is the start of a pre-push, check it out right here. We've got, boom, this is 22.45. That's 10.45 p.m. What's this? 23, 11 p.m. Boom, here's the pre-push, already started. Lower low, it ends up coming all the way up here. Whoops. It ends up coming all the way up here. It makes another, it makes a new higher high. And then it just ends up moving pretty wild, makes a new higher low, keeps going up. This is not a this is not a two one confirm that I look for. Um, this is a wild two one confirm. A two one a two one confirm that I'm looking for is looking more like this. It's looking like we have a higher high. Now we have a wick fill down here. You can see price comes down, leaves a wick to fill, closes below resistance, and the higher time frame was probably telling us bearish. So this is a, a 2 one confirm that I'm looking for. I'm looking for something more like this. I'm not looking for it to be crazy like this. If I'm trading at London Open last night, and, and if I'm looking to get in and get out trading, um, I'm already getting in by here, by the pre-push, and I'm already pretty much done. As you can see, it goes up 12 pips. There's not much more you can ask for besides that, unless you're just going to run stop loss and profit if you follow a trading plan. So if like a trading plan is we're stacking buys here, this is where our buys are, right? This is where our stop loss is because our stop loss is going to be below or it's going to be at that recent 15-minute resistance mark, right? Here's our recent 15-minute resistance mark. So here's our stop loss. Here's our take profit, right? 10 pips. Where's it at? 10 pips-ish here. And then we're going to run stop loss and profit or however, however you guys want to do it. Um, but if I'm going to be trading a pair like this, if I'm going to be trading a pair like, um, Euro GBP, uh, I'm, I'm understanding that London is going to be the best time to trade this pair. That's because of, of course, two currencies that are in London session are about to open. And then you're going to have, um, early in the morning, we're going to have, because the uh, Asian session or the London session is going to close. My gosh. 
London session will close at 8 a.m. That's my time, 8 a.m., which means we're going to have last push will happen between 7 to 8 p.m. or 8, 7 to 8 a.m. ish, maybe even 8 to 9. But we're going to have a last push at the end because now that we're going to be concluding the session, we're going to have a last institutional push. And as you can see, here's right, you can see price ends up consolidating and then here's your last institutional push, right, from 8 to 9 ish. There's your last push for just getting in as much as they can during that time. If that makes sense to you, let me look at the higher time frame and see what it looked like. It probably did a little bit of consolidation. Yeah, a lot of consolidation. Let me let me look here. So this is from two to six. So this is here. You can actually see that this price right here um, looked to be like we did were to have a bit of a wick fill, and then we're gonna drop down to that 15 minute time frame. We're gonna look at the 15 minute time frame, and we're gonna see here. Bing, 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 bing. This is about five by five. Here's right by six a.m. So you can see 6 a.m. actually did make a, a, a slight 2-2, two -two, right? It did make a slight 2-2, two -two, getting ready for it to, to go bearish. So the way that looks is, of course, we have lower low, we have higher high, and now we have higher higher low. So this ends up being 2-1 confirmed. Didn't move a lot. Still, there's a, there's a little bit of pippage to get in for that action. However, um, understanding that if if you are going to be trading a pair like euro gbp we will have a last push towards the end so i would be looking between seven to nine um usually it's between seven to eight usually there's like a nice little push but as you can see what price did between that time because as if you actually look here's by seven and then by 7 15 it did come down it ends up making a lower high and then it comes down this actually is like a two two to go bearish you can see lower it, it makes this is the, the highest point here it comes down lower low lower high to continue going down but then it consolidates for a, a nice hour and it gets ready for the last eight to nine push so um that's what i would be looking at for euro gbp let me look at euro euro jappy uh frank is saying to look at euro jappy let me pop up your i actually like euro jappy a lot euro jappy is a nice pair i like it a lot i don't trade it often i've traded it a few times but it's a nice pair as you can see, look, I still have zones drawn up. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a far drop with this zone. Okay, so what do we got on Euro Jappy? Let's start from the beginning. So a nice, so Euro Jappy, of course, is going to move. Euro Jappy is going to have a really nice push at the end of the, at, at um, London. And I'll tell you why. Euro Jappy will have a nice push at London. Because... Japanese, the Japanese session is coming to a close, so we will have a last push ending Asian session. Then Euro will open up during London session, right? So Euro Jappy will move extremely nice. Uh, around that London session time. So let's let's do a little, we can do a little uh, overview and recap and we can kind of see what that looks like. So um, like I said before, understanding that there's always a pre-push, there's always a pre-push, right? What did, what did it do last night? So here's right before, look, so here's 2300. Here is, um, here's a nice pre-push consolidating into the real um, push so what does that look like let's let's go here so we already know i mean this is pretty much confirmed guys we're going down like if price is going to drop down this far the higher time frames are confirming that we're going bearish right the higher time frames are confirming look what price did all the way through asian session yesterday right for around this is nikki time this is around nikki uh post nikki um time and then what is this is right in for the London session and this is right for two you can see the London set the the session opened in here and this is right for 2 to 6 p.m. or 2 to 6 a.m. you can see just by following momentum like where else is price gonna go 
So if you guys are out in like London, if you guys are in the UK, if you're in Europe somewhere, um, you know, it's it's really nice to be able to follow the higher time from momentum at momentum at those times. I'm not awake at 2 a.m., nor do I have any desire to be awake at 2 a.m. to trade. So for you guys, you guys have it nice if you're just following higher time frame momentum. So as we can see, Euro Jappy, we you see what you see what price did. We have right, we have the highest highs, right, lower low. There's a lower high. What do we do? Follow momentum. Boom, boom, boom. We make a new lower low. We're in momentum now. Now this is 2-2 two, two confirm because we have 1-2, one, 1-2-1 two, one, two, one confirm on the higher time frame going down. Now we have 1-2-1-2. We have one, two, one, two. That's 2-2 two, two confirm. So the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to have a pullback for price to just keep going down. That's the way 2-2 two, two confirm looks. Now we have um, uh, lo another lower high. What do we have? Now we have a wick to fill, right? Price comes up, rejects. This is liquidity wick again. Here's another liquidity wick. This is going into Asian Open yesterday. Boom. Price drops. And if you guys noticed yesterday, the currency meter for Jappy was major, major. And like a lot of these other pairs were really weak. So anything that was Jappy was just tanking last night. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you got in on all those, right? So... Euro Jappy is going to have. Here we go with this whole thing again. Euro Jappy is going to have a. Sorry, let me get rid of this. Euro Jappy is going to move really nice, the the best through Asian. I mean the the at the conclusion of Asian, in my opinion, for London Open, and then of course understanding like just back testing. If you, if you guys just base all your trading off the higher time frames, you would see, okay, so let's just look left a little bit. Let's see what price did. So here's right for Asian Open. What did price do? Price knocked it up. And then this is right concluding for London. So London is in this time. So boom, what did London do? Boom, boom. Now we have all the way from 6 a.m. And here's to 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. right in time for Asian Open again. So you can see right around the Asian Opens, around the London Opens, this is when price is having its biggest pushes. So anytime you backtest a pair, you want to understand where the currency resides in the what session and then just backtest. You can just look like, okay, look at this big old green. What is this? Okay, this is a 2 a.m. time. So I'm not trading at that time, but look at what it did it again. Here's the 2 a.m. time. So if, if you guys are trading Euro Jappy, you guys might want to in your in like London, UK, somewhere out there. You might want to base a trading plan around even the 2 a.m. mark. So whatever 2 a.m. I, I don't know what time in the afternoon that is for you guys because you guys are what eight hours ahead. Um, if this is going to be 2 a.m. for my time, my math is wrong. I'm pretty sure somebody in the audience is from the UK and they can they can tell me. I'm just being an idiot right now. But then let's just keep going. You can see if we're gonna. Here's another one. Here's right for the 2 a.m., right? My time, let's just keep looking left, and you can find more and more and more times at where price is going to be. Oh, this is all the way into the beginning of the month. So this was towards the end, so there's no movement here. Here's another one. I can almost just spot them by looking left. Here's two. I bet you this one is it too. No, that's six. So it was in this time. Price launched up. So this is by 6 a.m., right? Just keep looking left. Here's, here's two, right? Where's the next one at? A little bit of consolidation, not so much movement, right? But you, this is how this is how you guys back test. Look at these higher time frames to get an idea. We just get an idea. I don't want to sh distract you guys too much, but I just want you guys to understand the momentum in the higher time frame and how strong it is. But for Euro Jappy, um, if I'm gonna trade Euro Jappy, I'm just gonna be looking at these higher time frames. I'm probably gonna trade it around London because London Open is gonna have a nice push. If I'm trading London. Or in these Japanese sessions, so by 1,400 hours, which is right for the uh, Asian Open, or just whatever the higher time frame is giving me, just keep checking, and you can see where price is going. 2 a.m. is 10 a.m. UK, mate. Perfect. So that's 10 a.m. That's like a really good time to trade. So if that's if that's 10 a.m. for you guys, that's 10 a.m. for me for like USD Jappy, because if I'm trading USD Jappy, 10 a.m. there's usually a nice push. So it works the same way. Every You see how there's a structure. There's always a structure, guys. Clear the screen. Too much 
All right, Damien wants to clear the screen. There's too much going on. No problem. Yeah, I know there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Was was covering a little too much stuff, so I can only only imagine what your guys' eyes look like. Um. Anyways, does anybody want to go over another pair? Is there any other pairs somebody wants to go over or questions? I wanna I wanna take this time for questions now. Um. I've done a lot of the talking and showing. And I think you guys are getting more of an idea of how these higher time frames are working. And you're just looking for higher time frames to break our structures. We're, we're perfect for me, bro. Awesome, Frank. We're just we're we're waiting for price to break structures via higher time frame, and then we can move down to that 15 minute time frame to confirm, right? Let's see what USD Jappy's doing. USD Jappy will slow down a little bit more for this time. It will slow down a little bit for this time. Um, but as you can see, um, as you can see, around like 12, actually, in, in the next like uh, eight, uh, seven minutes, actually, there's usually a nice little push too. If you look at the one hour time frame, there's usually nice little pushes. So price actually ended up doing a, a, a nice 2-1 confirm on the one hour time frame, had a lower low, higher high higher low to go bullish and look at what the 15 minute time frame look like you can see all this major 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 rejection we've already had a major push down so we had a pull up now we have a pull down i don't know if you guys are into trend lines but it, it looked like it's a start of a little trend line i would assume that price is going to come up here it's probably going to bob and weave a little bit and then we're going to end up having a we're probably going to have something that might look like this we might have more of a um, trend line area here, maybe even just like this. We're just going to have to wait till these candles close to see where price does give us new support and resistance levels. But this is what price will end up looking like. Euro USD, thank you, bro. Of course, Damien. It's all it's all just higher time frame momentum, guys. Like that's literally that's all we're basing our trading off of is just our higher time frames. We're understanding where higher time frames are, and we're able to get into the market based off that. It's really, it really becomes that simple. That's what trading becomes. It's hey, what's the higher time frame doing? Oh, it's going down. Well, we're probably going down, so let's just wait to get better confirmation. Let's look for two ones. Let's look for two twos on the fifteen minute, etc. I think you guys are under, you're getting that a little bit better now. Euro USD, yeah, Euro USD. Let's look at Euro USD. Euro USD, tons of consolidation. We have huge. We had a huge consolidation box, right? I'm gonna look here, and I'm gonna look down here. So it's been consolidating forever. This has got to be for like what? Eight hours. Look at the four hour time frame. Yeah, for the past eight hours or so, like we've just had bing, 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 bing for this morning. I didn't trade EU this morning. I didn't really look at EU that much. Let's see. All the real nice big moves happen through London, as you can see. So let's let's recap. We know that the euro opens during London session. So where's our pre-push at? Booms right here. 20. Here is, you can see here. So here is um, 2300. We push up, we push up, hit the hit our resistance to confirm the, the direction that we're going. And what did London Open do? By, tw by 30 minutes uh, into the pre open, you have confirm that we're probably going down. You can see how strong this rejection was. Let me actually highlight this area because I want to look at the. I just want to look at the hour time frame and let's jump into this. Okay, perfect. So okay, so what do we got here for the hour time frame? We have where's London? Here's the pre openness here. Okay, so what do we got? We have our support level here. We've already broken our support. <coughs> We've already broken our support off of the one hour time frame. You can see our price already broke support. This was at uh, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. 
We have confirmed we've already broken support, so we can expect that price is going to continue going down. What did it do? It ended up making a pullback. So we switched down to those lower time frames and see what that pullback looked like. This is what our pullback looked like. This was the pullback and then confirmed by getting ready for the open. The open's at zero, zero, of course. But you can see the hour time frame, we have already broken structure. We already broke the structure. We're going to have like support and resistance like this, right? Our, our uh, support levels, our resistance levels. Right, and we've already broken it, which means we're going down. So you can never expect how high a pullback will be, but this ends up being another liquidity wick as we're, we've been talking about with liquidity wicks, right? We've already broken our structure, so where's price going? Okay, we're already going down. So either set your pending orders, you can set pending sell stop orders, right? So the way that would look is if you look beyond the wick. If I'm ever placing sell stops or buy stops, I go beyond the wick to leave a little bit of room for, um, for spread. So if I'm going to look beyond the wick a little bit and I'm going to say, well, I'm maybe going to place my sell stop here. Whoa. I don't know why I keep having issues with this. Sell stop. If I'm going to place my sell stop orders here, right? And let's say we're going for, as we like to do, right, our 10 pip mark. Here's our 10 pips, right? There is our 10 pips, or you have to understand where the next zone was. So that's the most important part is if we look at our higher time frame, we got to look left and say, well, we've got this. I think I deleted all of it too. That's why I don't already have it up. We got this here, looking left. Didn't quite hit this zone, but it did create one here. But anyways, this is where your profit target is. So if we're placing sell stops, around that London open time, right? We got, based off the, I, if I'm placing sell stops or buy stops, I'm looking I'm looking at either the four hour time frame or the one hour time frame. I don't place my sell stops or buy stops off the 15 minute time frame. I'm always looking at my higher time frame. That way I can get a better idea of beyond the wicks. So if my sell stops here, and then of course we gotta have a stop loss somewhere. So our stop loss is, somewhere in here, wherever our stop loss is, right? We've got our um, risk to reward, right? Our risk to reward. So five pips or 10 pips, and then we've got what, 10 pips? What did it end up going down? End up going down uh, 30 pips into the next day. So if we were, oh, if we were um, awake during this time, of course, just setting your stop losses in profit and then going to sleep, that's always just smart. So if price is gonna, so we enter our so we have confirm here, right? This is our pre-push. We have confirm. Really, we're going bearish. The higher time frame has already told us we're going down. So here was our pull up, just for it to go down. Just like on the beginning of the webinar when we talked about the liquidity week for Euro US for USD Jappy, it did the exact same thing, right? The exact same thing. So from 6 a.m. till 7 a.m., USD Jappy launched up, even though the four-hour time frame was telling us we were bearish. It did the ex it did the exact same thing on, you can see on EURUSD, right? EURUSD made a pre-push and now it confirmed direction 30 minutes before the open. So let's say we stack our cells here. This is where our cells are. For an example, not our um, cell stops, but this is our, our cell area. And then where's our stop loss going to be? Our stop losses are going to be above these recent support and resistance levels. So I'm probably going to place my stop loss either here or either here. These are where my stop loss to leave room for potential um, for, for potential extra liquidity grabs, right? These are for potential extra liquidity grabs. But so our sales are here, our stop losses are here, and our take profits are here. So if our take profits like this, right, 10 pips, I think that came before even London Open. It did, almost, right for London Open. So in, in the London open time, you can see our take profits are already done and then just run stop loss and profits, go to sleep. That's what I, that's, that's what I would do. Um, if the momentum is really there, you just play stop loss and profits and go to sleep. Just follow your trading plan, right? So two, as, as the um, example trading plan that I've been doing with you guys, 
over the past weeks is if we're doing four entries, we got two entries at 10 pips and we got four entries at stop loss and profit. So we, we move our stop loss to five pips and profit. We've already taken those now we, or we even move it to 10 pips, whatever. But if we got five pips, stop loss in profit, go to sleep. We wake up in the morning and what do we got? We've got another 40 pips of position. So now we've got a total of um, 100 pips. If we would have woke up in the morning and we had an additional 240 pips per position on top of the already 20 pips that we captured for the open, then we're looking at 100 pips for, for that day. That's a big deal, guys. To catch 100 pips is a big deal. Now, of course, like me, I like to stack a lot of orders, but hey, bro, sorry to interrupt. Um, I'm just going to send out some private messages. I'm getting a little bit extra. Can you go over how to came across the zones on a four-hour UJ? I'm confused on where to place them at the end of the wick or the body or both, okay? We got a question here. Do you trade around news announcement? Um, I do trade around news. Yes, um, I don't like to trade news in particularly, but sometimes news will like make a bearish push and then it'll make a pullback and it'll make like a two-two or a two-one and I'll enter off the pullback if it's really confirming the direction. And I have another strategy with news, which I'll go over another time, um, but I hedge. So I just place buy stops and sell stops. So it's either going one way or the other. So I, I take money either way or both ways sometimes. Um, so let me go over, I got a question from Dante saying that, can you go over how you came across the zones on the four hour? So I'm going to go to the USD Jappy. I'm going to go to the four hour time frame, and I'm going to clear everything. So I'm going to clear, I'm going to clear everything. Okay. So to answer the question, this is, this is how I'm drawing up my zones. I'm drawing up my zones on my daily time frame. I'm drawing up my zones on my hour time frame. I'm drawing up zones on my four-hour time frame. And then, of course, there's minor zones in the 15-minute time frame, etc. right? So if I'm looking here, for example, I'm just going to look left. I'm going to look left and say, okay, obviously we got a zone here, right? Let's look left again. What do we got? We got more zones here, right? Look left again. You can see where price is. This becomes other zones, right? We got more zones. And realistically, you're going to want to be looking all the way at the bigger picture. We can't see it unless we're on the daily at this point. So if we're going to go to the daily time frame, this is, this is, how, this is how you draw up zones correctly. Is you'd be able to look left and say, okay, see how this becomes a zone? You look left, price is touched, price is touched it here, right? You look left and you say, okay, well, this is a nice area, a nice little area that price has been, even here. But so we look left, we say, here's our zone here, right? Just by looking left. This is on the daily, of course, so it takes a lot longer to get to these zones. We look left here. Our zones are a combination of the wicks and where price closes, just looking left. So let's drop down to the four hour time frame, see what that looks like now, right? So based off that daily right so here's wicks here here's wicks all these areas here that we're able to just draw across the screen we look at the four hour time frame and we can see what damage we did we can see okay it was a perfect zone here to touch here and then of course you see how we have this and we have nothing here well let's look at the hour time frame the hour time frame might be able to help us out with that because now we've got my, more minor zones like looking left here off the hour just draw it across the screen we got zones here what you're looking for when we're drawing up zones is we're looking for areas that price really touches a lot right so looking left and you can see price touch it here 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 a lot and look it even comes up touches this zone directly so this is where your profit areas come in this is where when we're entering like cells and we're understanding like we can scalp the swing, right? So if we entered cells right here and we only closed at 10, look at the potential profit that we end up potentially missing out on 120 pips. So when you just place like cells at optimal times and you either just move stop loss and profit and you just keep moving stop loss and profit, you can still scalp on the whole way down as your account is being increased with margin as well. But what I'm looking for, oh, this is Euro USD too. So let me go to the USD Jappy. That's what we were supposed to be doing on USD Jappy. 
right? So USD Jappy, you can see on the four hour we have more we have more close history. You see how we have all this close history? So what I'm doing, I'm just zooming out a little bit and I'm looking left, right? So let's look left. You can see price came here. It was a nice area and it's been here too, right? It creates a nice zone. Let's just draw it across the screen. What do we got? Perfect. We got a nice zone area, right? We look across the screen. Just draw a box across the screen. Look for price closing and look for wick areas. Boom, boom, boom. Look, boom, boom, boom. Just touch this one. This was a daily, this, this happened yesterday. I remember when this was happening, right? What else we got? We got, let's look left. Here, let's look. We can just see how, see how this just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It just kind of sticks out. We'll just start practicing. Just, just put a box and draw it across the screen, right? Like, and see what you get. It's a perfect zone. Just tapped it, right? Tapped it again. So if you're on the four hour time frame, don't make your, your zones too large. Like, don't be like this. Because this is like, what, 100 pips maybe? It's like, make them small, make them reasonable. Make reasonable zones, right? But we're looking left. We're looking left. You can see price has been here, price has been here. So let's just kind of draw up a zone across the screen. Boom, perfect zone, right? And then we go a little bit closer for more minor zones to the one hour time frame as well, right? Zone, 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 more zones. So these are where our profit targets end up being. So if we're taking sales off of a lower high here, well, where's our next zone? Well, 15 pips to this one, I would say that this would be the next zone because this is where the support was. And if it blows through there, as it did, where's the next one at? Well, it'd be here. And if it blows through there, where's the next one? Well, it's here. And if it blows through there, where's the next one? Well, it's here. And what did it do? It blew through all of them. And it came all the way down to 60 pips. So this is where when we're scalping, we scalp the swing. Like I love scalping the swing. All over. Let me see what all over. So does it matter how thick the zone is? Um, yeah, that's what I was just kind of going over. Is if you're on like the four hour time frame, don't make your zone like this. Like, like that's not a like that's a bunch of zones. Just keep it reasonable. Kind of keep it small like this. Because if you do a pip count, for example, like let's see how many pips this is. Like that's three pips, okay? That's pretty reasonable for like a zone touch and a zone area. But if I'm gonna go like this, right? That's 13 pips. So that's a big difference in zones. That's a profit target. That's not necessarily just a zone. But when you keep it a little bit smaller, you get a better idea for like sell opportunities or buy opportunities where we're gonna close. Like here, for example, this was after Asian Open yesterday, continue through London. And then you can see, well, see how it closed right on, this, on the resistance? So if we're still going up, where's the next zone? We've already broke. We already broke the, we already broke the resistance. So the next zone is here. Because this is the next area where price is touched a bunch of times. And what did it do? It literally went straight up just to touch it, just to wick it in order to drop. So understanding where your zones are is a big key into um, understanding where you're closing for money, where, where you're closing, where your effective trading plan is. Because I'm a scalper at heart, like 100% scalper. If I can just close a 10 pips a position, I'm good to go. But training your eye to understand these higher time frame momentums better, then all you got to do is run your stop loss and profit and you got nothing to worry about. Just sit and forget about it. Let it do its thing. If it keeps going, great. If it hits your stop loss, great. If it hits your stop loss and profit, profit's profit. It doesn't matter how big or how little that, that was. I get stopped out all the time with my stop loss and profit. It's five pips, six pips, seven pips, whatever. Seven pips is better than zero pips. Especially when you're trading on um, respectable lot sizes. So if we're going to do lot size understanding. Right? So... Micro are pennies, right? Mini are dollars. And standard are also dollars, but up to thousands. So even if even if you're like, let's say you're on a 50.0 standard lot and you know it's 500 bucks per pip, you get stopped out of five pips. I mean, that's a big deal. 
what is that? We get it. 50.0 standard lot, that's 500 bucks per pip. We get stopped out at five pips, 2,500 bucks, just like that, right? So, um, when we're, when we're, I, I kind of lost myself there for a second. I was getting distracted with the money. But um, the understanding where your zones are, which a lot of you guys like in these questions are um, not understanding as much where zones. Zones are crucial and zones, um, Zones are a prime example of price action. Zones are 100% in coordinates with price action because without understanding where your zones are and the higher time frame momentum, then you don't understand um, when to close or how to enter, etc. And then stop just focusing on like 15 minute time frame. 15 minute time frame has a lot of noise. There's a lot of up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It might confuse you a lot. When when you're just looking at like a higher time frame, hour, four hour, etc., you've got much more understanding, right? The eleven o'clock finished here. I know twelve twelve um, p.m. has a little bit of a push. So what? You just follow the momentum. Price is just going up, right? Just follow momentum. It becomes very very simple, guys. It becomes very very simple. This is why I'm continuously putting out these webinars on. Um, every week for you guys um, just to kind of more brain refreshments right so let's let's look at this uh, little like trend line area as you can see this is probably where price is headed towards right probably gonna come up here I see price probably coming up here then it's just gonna go right back down and it's just gonna create a new support and resistance level and it's just gonna get ready to break let's see what the currency strength meters are does anybody have questions on the currency strength meter how to use it or how I use it. Like 13 pips. Anybody have questions on the currency meter? I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I think maybe it takes a little bit of time for the messages to go through, but um, I just want to know if you guys are are confused on how I use the currency meter when I use it, how it becomes effective. I go over it pretty well, I think. But uh, if, if I see any questions on it, I'll touch base with it again. But um, just kind of moving forward. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Um, I've I've covered a lot today. I covered a lot today, so I I just want to take this last bit of time to answer any other questions. And if you guys don't have questions, then I'll go ahead and I'll close down this webinar. And then I'll get ready to edit and um, upload it onto YouTube. But I just want to make sure I'm covering everybody's questions right now. That way you can proceed into the week a little bit clearer on momentum trading, higher time frame trading, etc. So I'll wait a little bit, see if you guys got any questions. Oh, I, I saw one in here. So. His zones at four hour, and can you show us what you will do if we have a have a fresh zone? Uh, Muhammad, I'm a little conf if you're still in here, I'm a little confused. On the question. I'm a little confused on the question that you had sent me, but um, like in pertain in, in, in pertaining to show us what you'll do if we have a fresh zone. Just saving a little bit more time for you guys. If you guys have any other questions, go ahead, type them up in the questions box. I'll get to it and I'll answer it. Um, the next webinar, um, the next webinar, I'm already thinking I'm going to go over opens and the specific opens that I trade and why I trade them. So I'll say next webinar will be London, Nikki. Probably 6 a.m. too, maybe. Again. I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll go over uh, London opens, Nikki opens. There's a real nice trick to Nikki open. 
Really, really, really nice trick. So I would love to share that with you guys and show you how that how that trick works. I'll say that for the next open or for the next uh, webinar. Um, yes, uh, I got another question. Please, would you recommend trading USD Jappy at London Open? I would recommend trading USD Jappy at London Open. Um, the reason why is because you're still going to have the last hour, right? So, like, let's look at London Open last night, for example. This is London Open last night. So, we have a lowest low here. Price already pulled down major, and now it's been consolidating for a few hours, right? Now we have a consolidation box, we have a break. Now we have a higher high, right? Now we have higher low. This is a higher low. London open is at zero zero, right? It's at midnight. But always one hour before, there's always a pre push. So you can see going into London Open, we can see that moving forward into London Open, we already have a, actually this becomes 2-2. Two, two. This is already 2-1, and then now it's 2-2. Two, two. So we already have 2-2 two, two confirm we're going up. Now we have another higher high, right? And then what do we have? Higher low right at London Open. So I do recommend trading uh, USD Jappy at London Open. Although GBP Jappy will move crazier because GBP Jappy is, of course, the British pound is opening in 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 London, during London session. But you can see moving into the open, we already have higher highs and higher lows off the 15 minute time frame moving into the open, and the open is right at at London. So you can see from the pre open. Let's just do it right from the open. You can see price goes up 20 pips last night with within. In, in about an hour's time. But if you got in before, it went up around 25 pips or more. So I do recommend trading USD Jappy at, at London Open. Um, just depends on the setup, depends on the movement and the volatility. And then of course, whatever our currency strength meter might be at that time. Because the US dollar um, last night was probably really strong as opposed to the Japanese yen. So just always using the to, to combine everything. So the is is time GMT. My time is Pacific Standard. So I'm California time. So my the questions are um, not coming in as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close down today, guys. Thanks for thanks for uh, showing up. Thanks for coming. Um, I really I really 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 appreciate it. Um, I enjoy helping you guys out. I enjoy the questions that you guys send me throughout the weeks. So next webinar, I'm going to be covering like London Open, Nikki Open, and of course like how I trade 6 a.m. again. And I'm going to create a poll on it, and I'm going to do like a little questionnaire for you guys, um, just to see how you guys are comprehending. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just close shop down, guys. So thank you so much for coming.